Mmm, yeah. Guess what time it is, gamers? That's right, it's time to show you what I got today from a friend. Well, actually, I got this like a week or so ago, and I'm finally making a video on it, because why not? But, I bought this off a friend. It's a long and crazy story about how I got this thing, and it's one that's a little bit too long for YouTube, but I bought it off him after he found this by, basically there was a Craigslist offer for, I'm dumping these old nice computers by the side of the road, and you want to get them, and he wrecks his car driving there, it's a long story, but he finally got these computers that were being left by the road, and one of them was an Alpha Server DS10 from Compaq or DEC, and the other computers were an SGI Octane 2, an SGI Indigo 2, and from what I recall correctly, a few Suns, and they were like nicer Suns as well, so essentially somebody was getting out of the hobby, and they had to get rid of these, and they just had to do it then. And a friend by a friend basically picks it up from the side of the road and crashes his car getting there, but he gets this and a few uh, SGIs as well and Suns, and I'm like I'm gonna buy this off him and he didn't have much interest in it. And the last hobbyist who had this, he actually had two hard drives in there. There was an IDE and a SCSI hard disk because this thing has both an IDE and a SCSI controller the SCSI's on an external card and the last owner also installed a video card and a Ensonic Audio PCI sound card which these could have for audio support as well so without further interruption let's turn this thing on so first here is the uh, interrupt switch in Windows NT mode and this actually does have the ARC firmware for NT but there was no NT HAL, so the only thing that can run on this is 2000, and you won't even get sound because the sound card's not supported. On NT, that's a reset button, but on SRM, or True64, and every other operating system, that is the halt button, so that kicks you right back to the firmware, kind of like what hitting the stop A command, I think, on Suns will do. And then we've got our three warning lights. One is for, um environmental issue and then the other two are for fan and overheat and then we've got our hard disk LED for IDE and SCSI if it's wired correctly and are powered. That That's not wired correctly so for SCSI that doesn't light up but for IDE it does so let's use let's turn it on and this actually has a push button power switch believe it or not so this was a computer from like 1999 it had push button uh, power switch it only had uh, 10 100 Ethernet, which is also what the uh, the replacement, the DS15, had. And it still has a hard power switch. So we flipped it on. The environmental LED blinks a few times. And then we go over here. And this sounds familiar. It's just like a PC. We've got our little video card BIOS posting, which is an Elsa Gloria or, Elsa Gloria or uh, Permedia 2, and we've got our SRM console, and it's a blue screen, just like the blue screen of death, testing the system. Well, it's just like the blue screen or the uh, older um, ARC firmware. There's our SCSI hard disk spinning up. And since I don't have any OS's on that, that serves just to add a nice sound to the system. So it displays our system temperature, which it's a little hot because I had this thing on not long ago. We've got our console firmware from 2007. The older version of this firmware actually says Compaq, but when you update it to 731, it deletes the word Compaq because HP bought Compaq and True64 when you update it it also changes the Compaq branding to HP and the same with VMS so I've got this set to just take you to the Chevron prompt but let's boot but first I'm just gonna show you a little quirk I found 
if you do not have OS flags set to A, it will not boot to True64 uh, multi-user mode. But if you have it set to A and you try booting VMS, you'll get another issue, which is that um, essentially it will not boot. It will not like find the boot disk. So we're going to boot. Another thing to note is that every OS, and I learned this on the multi up but I really nailed it in on here, every OS stores the date and time in a different manner on the alpha. So True64 is booting. I've, I've updated with the latest patch set, so it says HP, and we've got ourselves our boot. Elza Gloria. And video kicked in. And it does not take terribly long to boot whatsoever, especially once you've got it like loaded and you've done all your updates. But it does this does not take long to boot. Now let's just see just how fast the EV6 CPU was, which was a shame because these things were fast computers in their day. But they kill off Alpha because DEC was run by idiots and Compaq was more interested in Intel. Same with HP. They were more interested in, you know, uh, making money with Itanium. And so, even though the Alpha was the greatest invention since microwavable white castles, they ended up killing it off just like... You know, it's a shame that Alpha died in the same way that it's a shame that, like, art sites on the internet died. I mean, you know, Tumblr and Twitter, those are garbage because you don't see niche internet artists producing art anymore. They just fight with each other about stupid stuff, I guess. So I've got this installed. It says HP True64 Unix with the whole design language HP had going at the time. So it's logging as root. So now that I've got True64 on a much faster computer, this thing is really fast. I mean, it's real fast. I gotta jack the resolution up, by the way. It's, it's a real low resolution, so it ain't working. It doesn't look that great, but... You know, True64 is real quick. We want to run our demo programs. Well, they're gonna be, uh... They're gonna be much quicker. I mean, we got Solitaire Course. Why not? I mean, not as cool as SGI's and Doom. But we've got Solitaire. And let's do the Mandelbrot thing. And the thing is, this is much quicker than the Multia was. The Multia might have been slow. But this is wicked fast. Like, damn. I mean, the, that's the fun part about this Mandelbro thing is... Let's make it full screen, why not? And I don't know, but this just feels so much quicker than it does on the multi, even though it's drawing. I mean, on the small screen, it drew real quick. And we zoom here, and it's taking its time. But even then, this is 1024, 768, it's not too slow. Let's quit this. Uh, we've got our stuff like Maze Walker on here. Um, yeah, there ain't a lot on True64. But I do have... Compilers. There's a few more I gotta install, like GCC and all that, but... I've got Compact C. Oh, there's no versions I can get. Uh, I've got Pascal Compiler. And I've got... I don't know if, what the Fortran Compiler is. Oh, no. That's not... What is it? Ah, F90 is what it is. 
I haven't really messed with Fortran, but but yeah, there, that's the Fortran compiler. Um, and then we've also got a yeah. Uh, there's a COBOL compiler, but I don't know what the command for that is. Which you know, there's definitely somebody looking for COBOL jobs right now. If you know the whole ever like it, it's overloaded on unemployment. Uh, unemployment systems are overloaded right now, so they need COBOL programmers. Look, eyes. Ooh. Ooh, ooh. So we've got our stuff here. Um, we got multimedia, and it's it's basically what you'd expect from a Unix box of the time. Nothing too fancy. I mean, the real interesting part with True64 is the fact that it's a mock microkernel operating system. But other than that, it's an interesting box for sure, and it's honestly one of the last weird computers in this realm that I've intended to get a hold of. Well, the only other one I could think of would be an AS400, but I kind of blew my chances to get one years ago, and maybe I'll end up getting one once I save up a bunch of money, but, because that would be interesting to have, honestly, and it would be interesting to put on my resume so I'm not in the neat basement anymore, but there. This is the Alpha Server DS10 from Compaq. Fun computer. So yeah, there you have it. A little quickie video on a computer I picked up recently. I might take a look inside of it later on, but it's nothing too special. It's just a typical... Uh, I might make a more in-depth video on this later, actually, but not for now. Maybe once this whole... Uh, once, once, my, once the world stops being the real-life version of the video game Deus Ex from... Ion Storm and Eidos, then maybe I'll make another video about this thing more in depth, like I did the Multia. And it, it's similar to the Multia software wise, it's just much faster. I mean, there's not a whole lot I, t I could talk about here that I didn't talk about in the Multia, but I finally got a much faster alpha, and I've got three alphas now. Which is interesting. And I think the only other weird computer I'd need, like I said, to like really have a whole thing of weird enterprise high-end computers would be an AS400. One day, one day. And at least, like I said, that would be something good to put on a resume when you live in a town where all your jobs are one-year experience needed to stock shelves and flip burgers and uh, sell cell phones and all that fun stuff. You need a year of experience to do that. Might as well learn OS 400 or something fun like that. Like learn some tech stuff and maybe get a job that'll get replaced in a few years. So yeah, uh, th there's the uh, alpha. And one more thing. Let's OSF1 baby. That's all it needs to be said. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more.